All right, folks, we're going to start. And we're off. Good evening and welcome to the May 17th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. Section 40 of Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 allows for the continuation of remote meetings. As such, this meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference and is also being broadcast on cable channel 15 and streamed online by FCTV. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be cognizant of what you say, how you say it, and what can be seen and heard in your background. We, uh, we're short a commissioner. We're gonna be short another commissioner momentarily. However, we have a quorum, so we're moving forward. Just to remind you guys for commenting or calling each of you and at the appropriate time, please refrain from speaking over each other. Also, all votes have to be done by roll call. When I call your, your name, please state your name for the record and your vote, even if you've made the motion or the second. To our public participants, at any time during this meeting, you may enter any comments or questions via the chat function. At the appropriate time, they will be read into the record. If you'd like to be heard on a specific hearing, let us know via the chat function. Then at the appropriate time, I will call for public comment. When you are selected, you will be moved into the hearing as a participant. As such, you must have your video enabled, be succinct and respectful of others. Public comments will be limited to three minutes each. Regarding RDAs, under a request for determination of applicability, the applicant is asking the commission to determine if the provisions of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and or the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw apply to their proposed project. A negative determination is that the provisions of the act and or the bylaw do not apply. Therefore, the project may proceed as proposed. However, a positive determination means that the provisions of the act and or the bylaw do in fact apply Therefore, the project would require a notice of intent application. So as an applicant, you want to hear a negative determination. For the benefit of anyone waiting for a particular hearing tonight, and so that you're not waiting unnecessarily, the following hearings are expected to be continued. Number 7J Road, number 23 Spencer Baird Road, and and I'm stalling, number 60, Carrie Lane, are expected to be continued. Uh, we're gonna venture a little bit off the agenda tonight for one thing to accommodate someone. And that is we're gonna move the order, uh, the order conditions um, for number zero, Charles Lane, right up to the front. And the quorum excludes Kevin and Steve. Betsy missed one meeting, but she read up on it. So we're under the Mullen rule. Um, she's on this quorum. All on you, Jim. Oh, okay. So I didn't know if you wanted to read it. So we're voting the order of conditions for Michael. Oh Mitchell. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Aye, aye. All right, so the, the order conditions is for Michael and Mary Azaro, zero Charles Lane, map and parcel ID, number 25020250004A, Falmouth, Mass. Now you're up. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is for the new construction of a home within the DCPC. That is the only resource area we are dealing with here. Um, it is the construction of a single family home, the installation of a Title V sewage disposal system, as well as extensive restoration for um, understory that had been removed prior to the applicant um, owning the property. So they are undertaking some extensive restoration work within the DCPC, as well as the DCPC plantings. Um, staff was concerned with the installation of, I believe, some hay scented fern in the DCPC that has been switched out and the board saw that to a huckleberry sod. Um, there was um, the applicant addressed some concerns on the trees that Commissioner Harlow Hawks had 
So I think um, the staff doesn't have any additional recommendations at this time other than um, go forward with the plan as presented. All right. Anybody have anything they want to see in there different? All right. I make a motion to accept the uh, order as discussed. Oh, All right. We have a motion and a second to issue an order of conditions. There's nothing else. All right. Betsy? Glad felt her eye. Courtney? Bird eye. Matthews I, Maury. Arlo Hawks I. It is unanimous. We have issued an order of conditions. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Maury. Thank you guys. Thank you for letting me go back to work. I thought that that was so I could go home early. <laughs> yeah, how about that? It's gonna be a pretty short meeting, so don't worry. All right. Now back to the original agenda. First up, vote minutes, April 3rd, 2023. Anybody? Mr. Chairman, I reviewed the minutes and would move approval as written unless there's any comments this evening. Thank you. For a second. All right. Any questions or comments? All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as submitted. Let's see. Glad filter I. <clears throat> Courtney? Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous with this quorum. We have accepted the minutes as submitted. Next up are minutes for April 19th, 2023. Anyone? I'll move yet. I'll move the adoption of the minutes uh, as written with any possible um, additions, if necessary. Second, oh, O'Brien. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as submitted for 419. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Bob Felter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve? Abstain. They did not attend. Oh, I'm sorry. Thought I was getting better at that. Okay, we still have a quorum of four. We have accepted the minutes of 419. Next up are our vote minutes, April 26, 2023. Move the adoption of the minutes of April 26, 2023 with any potential changes as suggested by the board. Well, I'll second. second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as submitted. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Well, I'll filter I. Courtney. Bird I. Matthews I. Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve. Matt and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted the minutes of April 26. Next, minutes of May 3rd, 2023. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll move the adoption of the minutes of May 23 with any potential changes by the board. May 3rd. May 3rd, I'm sorry. Yep. Pat and second. I know you can see into the future, but. 23rd is a little ways away. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes of May 3rd. Questions or comments? All right, Betsy. I'm not gonna vote, I wasn't there. Bird I. Matthews I, Kevin. O'Brien I. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. Well, it's not really unanimous. It's accepted with a quorum of four and one abstination. We have accepted the minutes of May 3rd. Thank you, Kristen. Next up, a request for a continuance under notice of intent. First up, Teresa Mancini, 7J Road Realty Trust, 7J Road, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a patio. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until May 24th. Reason. Uh, it's escaping me right now, Courtney. Uh, Alyssa, do you remember why Tom asked? Okay. I think they're trying to, uh, Courtney, I'm not quite sure if the applicant is still out of town. I know she was going to be out of town. She may still be out of town. Okay. Sorry about that, Court. I'll um I'll move to um uh, continue this until what was the date we next week, Courtney? May twenty fourth. May twenty four. Second, Glad Filter. All right. We have a motion and a second to continue this to five twenty four. Let's see. Glad Filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Patton, I. It is unanimous. We have continued this until 524. Next up, Cobalt Partners, LLC, 23 Spencer Baird Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, an existing single family dwelling construct a new single family dwelling with a deck, entrance station, and install mitigation plantings. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance till June 14th. Mr. Bird is because they are still working through uh, the select board process because part of the project is on town property. Okay, I will so move. Second, Gladfelter. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until June 14th. Questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. Brian, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have continued this until 614. Next up are requests for determination of applicability. First up, Town of Falmouth, various beaches, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to install water stations at nine beaches. Jen, I'm sorry, Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Claude Felder, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Gladfelter, I. Courtney. Bird, I. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Matt and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Paul, Paul Fusile, 55 Ostrom Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to pump dry and fill an existing cesspool and to install a Title V sewage disposal system. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Gladfelder, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous, we have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Steve and Betsy Blackwell, 362 Walker Street, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, an existing single family dwelling and to construct a new single family dwelling with a garage, decks, and reconfigured driveway. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed, and this project is solely located in an AE flood zone. Bird, so move. Glad filter second. All right. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. <clears throat> Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. And I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, 
Woods Hole Golf Club, 130 Quisset Avenue, Woods Hole, Mass. For permission to renovate and reshape sand bunkers. Ms. Bergeron? Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Bud Holter, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Bud Holter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Bad and aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, K Con 438 Seacoast Shores Boulevard, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to rebuild a deck with an expanded footprint. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Glad, <laughs> Glad filter second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. Pat and aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up. Lee A. Viola, trustee, Lee A. Viola Family Trust, 293 Edgewater Drive East, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to remove a carport and construct an addition. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed, and this project is solely located in an AE flood zone. Bird, so move. Glad Filter, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Glad Filter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Next up, Terry A. Baker, 328 Sipowicet Road, Falmouth, Mass. Full permission to pump dry, fill and abandon the existing septic. Install a new Title V sewage disposal system and install new utility services buried under existing driveway. Ms. Bergeron. Staff recommends a negative three under the state and a negative two under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Heard so moved. Glad Filter second. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Glad Filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. Pat and aye. It is unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. Thank you to the staff for all of that. Next up are requests for hearing under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. As a reminder, public commenting is limited to three minutes. So I encourage you to stay within the purview of this board, which are the rules and regulations of the Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw and how they pertain to a particular application. The chair reserves the right to stop any commenting that is disparaging or inconsequential to the hearing. First up, Robin Canna, 24 Lakeshore Drive North, Falmouth, Mass for permission to raise, R-A-Z-E, an existing single family dwelling, construct a new single family dwelling with a deck and a porch, conduct invasive species removal, install restoration and mitigation plantings and repair an existing boardwalk. Jim. Yes, I've promoted Doug Schneider, but it might be Raul. Doug, is this you or Raul? You, okay. You're on mute, Doug. Yep. 
I'm on now. Schneider, you're up, sir. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, Doug Schneider from Cape and Islands uh, here on behalf of the owner, Robin Kahana, on 24 Lakeshore Drive, if I may share my screen. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. Just to get us started where we are, we're on the north side of Jenkins Pond in the northern part of town. Um, it's a single family residence. It's been in existence since the 60s. Um, just cycle through a couple of, get us down to an aerial. Uh, the house is on Jenkins Pond uh, with a driveway of the house and uh, shorefront area. The subject property suffered a catastrophic fire back in May of 2022, uh, which I'm just going to cycle through a couple of quick pictures, give you an idea of what we're looking at today. Excuse me, Doug, can I interrupt you? Yes. Can, can you uh, make your screen full size? Uh, I thought I did. I don't think it's me, but it might be. All right, I mean, we'll get by. I got a magnifying glass. No, I'm kidding. I might be on a big better. monitor, but is that any better? That's, That's better. better. Better, Doug, thank you. So I'm gonna, I just wanna scroll through a couple of pictures to give you an idea of what the site looks like before we get into the details of what's happening here uh, with the site plan. Uh, now my size is all messed up. <laughs> <laughs> this is the front of the house uh, on Lakeshore Drive. Uh, fire damaged, visible. Uh, again, the side of the house porch. That porch is going to be is going to be removed. Uh, side of the house, you can see it's. Pretty devastating. The foundation that you see here, uh, most of the, the foundation is staying. So the footprint of the house is staying generally where it is. Uh, scrolling down through, this is the water view. Uh, you see the porch and deck that were destroyed. And coming down through, we've got a walkway that goes down to the water uh, as long as, as well as a shorefront area. And then if I jump to the site plan, this little walkway going up from the water, from the water view. And can everyone see the site plan all right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so on the, the left side over here, you have a just an overview of what the house looked like at the time of the fire. Uh, the new proposal is to use the foundation that's there for the house. Uh, we'll be adding a porch in the front. They'll have a new foundation underneath it. The wood porch on the side will be removed. So we've got a slight reduction on that side. Um, we'll be adding a little bit of foundation and, and porch on the water side, uh, along with a deck and stair to mimic what, what is there now. Our resource areas we're dealing with are Jenkins Pond, a great pond which has an inland bank defined at elevation 20 by the zoning bylaws. Uh, and since this is in a uh, zone two, we have a, a zone A that extends all the way from the pond, all the way to the front of the house that you can see here. Uh, there is a, a slight increase in the zone A with the porch out front and a deck that was Part of the deck that was permitted back in 98, I think it was, that apparently did not go through the commission, but got a building permit. And so we're mitigating for that slight increase, as well as the, the stairs that go down to the water and landing areas. So we end up with, um, I think it's a little over 300 square feet of increase in the area in the A zone, and hence a little over 900 square feet of vegetative 
mitigation that you see in green here. Uh, the original order of conditions from when the house was built back in 80, I think it's 88, 89 timeframe, uh, had an area that was supposed to remain natural that is, has had some issues with some invasive species. So we're looking to do some restoration uh, in the crosshatch area, do some invasive species removal at the same time. Uh, Maria Hickey has prepared a uh, restoration description and plan for that. Uh, we'll be putting in a fence along the, the sideline on the west, uh, rebuilding a fence along the easterly sideline, looking to rebuild the steps that go down the water, not into the water. Uh, where they are now, we'll be installing some dry wells to pick up the roof runoff, which we don't have right now. Driveway in the front will remain essentially the same. Septic remains the same. Uh, so we're basically staying within the same footprint, adding a couple of pads for AC units that weren't there before. Uh, we'll have a limit of work stake set up and staked out before anything's done. And we're looking for a positive order conditions to move forward. And I will turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman, if do you want me to stop sharing the screen. Yes, please. Thank you. All right, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to promote Maria Hickey up because I do have one question about the planting plan and I forgot to promote her up earlier. Sorry about that, Doug. Um, I don't have any questions for you, Doug. Thank you. Hey, Maria. Good evening, everyone. For the record, Maria Hickey from Maria Hickey and Associates Landscapes. Thank you so much for hearing our project tonight. Very sadly, uh, the client's house burned down. And we are looking to obviously raise it, put a new house up and do her associated restoration and mitigation plantings and add some cedar trees. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Maria. Sorry for not promoting you up earlier. Um, just one question on, I don't have a problem with the planting plan or what you're proposing, the species. It's just that you said the area was 75% invaded with um, invasives. And when we looked at the site and when we looked at the pictures, we thought it looked predominantly like grasses and the natives down by the water, you know, they're not dead, they're alive. So okay. where did you come up with the 75% it was, invaded? It was mostly like on the lot, there's a house next door that's extremely close and it's all within there. There's all kinds of stuff going. Uh, when I went out on the site to look at everything, it was obviously earlier this spring. And I wondered if some of the plants had been um, adversely affected by the heat and the smoke from the fire. Um, so my thought was to just beef up that whole area and the invasive removal is just more primarily on the side of the house. Yeah, so we that's where we noticed the invasives as well yes. as on both sides of the house. You have right. that bear, the barbarian right. and the other invasives, but like yeah. in the middle, it just seemed like grass, grass. Towards, the, yeah. towards the bottom. I wasn't sure from the pictures, it was either summer sweet or almost like, um, was it swamp azalea? Uh, I don't I couldn't know. Tell. I don't know. I couldn't tell. It looked like a little world. Um, yeah, pattern, I almost thought so. it might be winterberry, but it wasn't tall enough. You know. Yeah. So just I couldn't, because I of the wood tell. on it. But at any rate, we want to supplement what's there and add no. more. No, yeah. absolutely. And like I said, I didn't have any problem with the plan or the yeah. species. I just was wondering where that seventy-five percent came from. That's all. A lot lines. Thanks. Yeah. All right. That's all. Thank you for that clarification, Maria. I have you no more questions, welcome. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Bergeron. I have no questions. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Comments, Betsy. Doug, I have a question. Is there going to be a rent station at this house? We do not have one on the plans at the moment. Jeff and I looked at that this afternoon, and there is not one on the plans, there isn't one on the, there wasn't one on the, the plans that we had. Okay, so would you just remind your client that should they wanna put a rent station in, they're gonna to have to have an amendment? Yes. 
Okay, thank you. That's all, Jamie, thank all you. Right. Courtney. Uh, no comments, nothing to add to Betsy's. Okay. Kevin. Nice catch, Betsy. Uh, no comments, Mr. Chairman. Well, it's not salt water, so that maybe they won't have one. But people like those rinse stations. I, I no, I, they'll they'll want one. Yeah, that's like a three hundred acre rinse station. All right, Steve. No comments, sir. Thank you. All right, Jen. Is there anything in the public chat function, please? Doesn't appear to be anything in the public chat. No hands are raised for this one, Mr. Chairman. All righty, thank you. So I'd like to make a motion to close this hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Any other questions or comments? All right, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. And aye. It is unanimous. We have closed the hearing. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Maria. Thank you Thank all you so much. much. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right. Next up, Nye's Neck Association, Inc. Zero Westwood Road, parcel number 041046, North Falmouth, Mass, for permission to conduct beach nourishment. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm promoting Mike Borselli up to present his project. I remember that name. I haven't seen that hey, guy Mike, in a long time. Is there anybody there else? Am I promoting anybody else from the association for this? Nope. Okay, Not perfect. Not That'd be great. Is Maria still supposed to be up? Yeah, I was going to stop my video. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I didn't see Maria. Hang yeah, on, you're, Maria. I'm going yeah, to move back. You're not supposed to have to do that, though. <laughs> no, I'll be I back. <laughs> I have to move Maria into attendees, and I'm going to do that right now. Give me one second. Change role. Right, Mike, you can have lunch while we're at it. You're throwing me off my mo momentum. <laughs> Mike's, Mike's been practicing since the last time so that he, he knows how to put up his his uh, plan on the screen. Am I being made sport of? Yes. That's a good sign, Mike. <laughs> Mr. Borselli, you're up, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the commission, for the record, Mike Borselli, Falmouth Engineering, and I represent the applicant. Uh, Nye's Neck Association. Um, with your permission, I'd like to share my screen. Yes, sir. Look at that, I remembered how to do it. <laughs> the Nye's Neck Association owns this uh, beach within the association um, on lot 46. It's adjacent to uh, their existing community dock. There's an access uh, road called Sixth Shoreway off of West Wood Road. The um, property uh, is a beach. It is on the shores of Buzzards Bay. So resource areas include land under the ocean, land containing shellfish, uh, coastal beach, and there's a coastal bank. The beach is at the toe of the coastal bank between that and um, land under the ocean, as you might expect. Um, the applicant has um, previously obtained an order of conditions uh, to do the same exact project. Um, he, they proceeded with that beach nourishment on an annual basis. The uh, order, of course, was good for three years. There were two extensions granted under that order, um, and it was time to file a new notice of intent to restart the clock. Hopefully, we'll, you can issue a favorable order of conditions 
that will allow them to continue to do what they've been doing. The beach um, nourishment um, is needed in the amount is approximately six inches uh, per season across the 2,500 square foot area. It results in um, creating a stable beach and the profile of beach is, is being maintained. The sand that's brought in is compatible in grain size and chemical content as the, the sand that's on the beach. The work is typically done by uh, Billy Bourne each season. Um, it's placed um, seaward of um, yeah. Mihai water. <clears throat> the uh, volume of sand placed uh, each season is a maximum of 50 yards, which is about two truckloads in a bobcat, spreads it on the beach. We show the construction access, which is off of the parking lot, which is right here. The staging area is the parking lot. And um, the applicant just wants to hopefully get permission to uh, re-up their beach nourishment uh, approval so that they can continue to do this um, moving forward. And that pretty much sums it up. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes, sir. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, I do not have any questions. As Mike said, the association has been doing this for, I th think the first time I heard of it, I had just started. So it, it's been quite a long time. And as Mike said, you know, usually we'll allow the beach nourishment orders of conditions to extend for several years, but eventually we do like to have a new survey on the beach just to see if there's any real drastic changes to the profile of the beach. So that's why we're requiring the new notice. So thank you, Mike. Yep. But no substantive questions at this time. All right. Ms. Bergeron. I have no questions. Thank you. All right. Commissioner comments, Courtney. No comments. Kevin. No comments, Mr. Jim. All right, Steve. No comments. I agree with Jen. It's a good idea to review them periodically. Thank you for that. All right, Betsy. No comments. All right, Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman, and no hands were raised this evening for this project. Thank you. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. There's nothing further. All right. Let's see. Quad filter aye. Courtney. Third aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. It is unanimous. We have closed the hearing. Thank you, Mr. Borselli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioners. I will see you next time. Bye, Mike. Bye, Bye Mike. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mike. All right. Next up, and Star. Yes, our electric company, DBA Eversource Energy. 395 Mill Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to replace the existing direct lay cable with a buried submarine cable and to construct the associated transition manhole and duct extension. Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted um, Dwight Dunk to for Epsilon Associates to present the project. Dwight, am I promoting somebody else up? I thought I saw somebody else from your group in here. Um, Nicole Perlot. Oh yes, Nicole. Sorry about that, Nicole. I'm coming for you. <laughs> and and the other two um, Eversource folks have called in, I think by um, phone. So I'm not sure if they show up with their name. I don't see phone. any phone numbers okay. here. If the Eversource people, if Oh, they can't raise their hands. Um, <laughs> do you know their names? Their Mike? names would be um, Matt Waldrop and Katie Cook. All right. Katie Cook, you said? Yes. 
I see Katie, so I'm going to okay. promote Katie up, but I don't see. I was looking for Matthew Waldron, okay. and I don't. Yeah, he's having a challenge logging in from his on his phone. So, yeah. But I think we can probably get started. Um, and I think primarily wanted folks on for any, you know, for questions. So. Yeah, I'm trying to promote Katie up, and I don't. Oh no declined to be promoted as a panelist so okay <laughs> it's all you Dwight that's fine <laughs> thank you um Mr. Chairman and Commission members um if you don't mind I'd just like to share my screen yes sir okay great and can everybody see that yes okay great um just um to start out on some administrative uh, pieces um, we did get the DEP file number issued this afternoon. Um, so it's DEP file number uh, uh, SE025-4857. Um, I did forward that to you, Jennifer, but it was this evening. Yes, you did. Hours. We received right. those white. Thank you. Great. You're welcome. And we also forwarded the green cards to you yesterday by yes. email. Great. We Just wanted to cover those well. two administrative pieces. Uh, great. And um, I'll try to keep this brief since we we're here two months ago, almost to the day, uh, for the fifth cable. So this is very much this, a very similar project. However, this project involves replacing the existing 91 cable with a new cable. The 91 cable is a direct lay cable that extends from Elm Road over to Tisbury. And this replacement cable will extend from the Mill Road parking lot over to Tisbury. Um, so we have, um, as identified here, just shy of a half mile horizontal directional drill um, installation uh, from the Mill Road parking lot um, to beyond the, the eelgrass so that we don't have any impacts to the eelgrass. The uh, green is the mass GIS eelgrass boundary. And this blue line here is from our fall 2021 um, survey. So that was the um, eelgrass limit identified during that uh, 2021 marine survey. And then um, in Falmouth waters, um, after the um, HDD, it will be uh, 2.15 miles installed by jet plow. Um, and then in the parking lot, there'll be two manholes and then 190 feet of buried duct to um, uh, extend the cable from the um, terminal manhole over to the duct system to be installed in Mill Road. Um, I'm just, you know, just very briefly, we've talked about the HDD installation and the jet plow, you know, um, for the previous, for the, for the fifth cable. Um, and just, you know, just quickly, the HDD is an arc. Um, it will allow the project to avoid altering dune and beach intertidal in eelgrass, and then it will exit out the sea floor. Um, once the final diameter has been reached, a HDPE uh, conduit will be installed um, to keep the hole open until a cable can be installed. Um, and then the cable will be installed um, by hydroplow, but from the barge, it will be pulled from the sea, sea, sea side to the land side, um, get the cable secured in the terminal manhole, uh, re-spool it through the jet plow, and then it will continue as a jet plow installation, installing the cable six to 10 feet below the sea floor. Um, the, the project need for this one, um, where this is the replacement cable and the um, what we have here is the 99 cable that's existing direct lay cable. This is the proposed fifth cable that was recently approved by the Conservation Commission uh, from Surf Drive parking lot over to East Chop. This is the 75 cable that was installed about 10 years ago as a buried cable from Mill Road over to Tisbury. And then this alignment here is the 91 and the 97 cable um both of which are in, in about the same location 
the, the current 91 cable has faulted about eight times in the last 20 years, with the most recent fault occurring in July of 2021. Uh, you know, that number of faults really indicates that the cable is uh, has reached its uh, life. Um, it's about, it's, you know, nearly 40 years old, and it's just time to be replaced, and it's um, best to be replaced as a buried cable, and this cable is needed just to maintain that existing four cable supply system over to the vineyard. Um, the resource area is down by Mill Road parking lot, um, land under ocean and land containing shellfish, uh, and land containing land with tidal action, and then we have um, working from the sea to the land. Um, we have beach and dune, uh, barrier beach, and the hundred year floodplain uh, as land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, and we do have estimated habitat um, along the beach and then the water sheet, um, the HDD. The work area is in the gravel parking lot outside of the mapped habitats, and then the jet plow will occur uh, along the water on the water sheet of uh, Vineyard Sound. We are awaiting the natural heritage uh, letter. Uh, this was filed as a joint Wetlands Protection Act and Mass Endangered Species Act uh, notice of intent. Um, I'm expecting a similar letter for this that we received for the fifth cable um, with time of year restrictions. But we'll, you know, we'll wait till see what natural heritage says. Um, and then the uh, landside work area um, occurs on the in the parking lot within the 100-year floodplain. A portion of that is identified as barrier beach. We'll see those limits in one of the other figures, and then a 100-foot buffer zone from Dune. So this is just the. Um, the layout, the, uh, the um, figure of the layout, not the not the uh, engineering plan, but just so that you can see what's being proposed. This asterisk here, the star, is the HDD um, entry point. Um, the the be the pit and established around here, and that's where the terminal manhole will then be placed. The other uh, transition manhole, and then the cabling that goes over to the new duct. Um, this is the, this orange is the existing 75 cable with those two manholes. And this limit here is the limit of the uh, mapped barrier beach. We don't have any new structures in the barrier beach. However, we do have a work zone that um, includes the gravel parking lot that's um, within the map barrier beach. And this is just some uh, cross sections that show the um, existing grade, where the um, exit uh, entry point is, the terminal manhole, and then the, the, the road and the, the dune and the beach uh, that goes down. And you can see that we have a, uh, you know, we're several, this is each one is 10 feet, we're a good 20 to 30 to 40 feet below the beach and the intertidal. Um, this is the engineering layout from the plan set that was included with the notice of intent that just gives some more detail to show how all the equipment will fit uh, in the parking lot area. And um, the entry hole, as we've talked about before, there would be a gravity cell installed um, at the exit location to contain any drilling fluids that may um, exit through the, uh, the exit hole. And in terms of the mitigation measures, um, primarily it's the construction techniques. The, we have, you know, the horizontal directional drill avoids altering those resource areas and the jet plow or hydroplow minimizes the alteration of land under the ocean um, and land containing shellfish, certainly much less so than a traditional trench and backfill. Um, in terms of other mitigation measures, there's uh, stormwater management, um, erosion sedimentation control plan established for the um, parking lot 
during construction, basically perimeter controls, um, as well as you know good housekeeping in terms of um, any types of hydraulic fluids, um, uh, other materials being kept in covered containers, um, and any catch basins that are in the area being fitted with inlet protection, um, and uh, you know that is outlined in the stormwater report, a stormwater checklist that was also sent to Jennifer uh, today. And uh, the other element of uh, mitigation is having a, um, a, a brackout plan or um, in, you know an incidental release plan for uh, drilling fluids, and that's um, included with the notice of intent. Um, should there be loss of fluids during the operation, that typically occurs through fissures or um, the geology um, in in the area. So that identifies the steps and measures to uh, control any incidental or inadvertent release. Um, the compliance with the regulations, this is filed as a limited project um, as the construction of an underground um, public utility being a cable. Um, and although it does qualify as a limited project, it was designed to comply with the standards of um, land under the ocean, land containing shellfish. Uh, for the jet plow work. Um, there are no um, performance standards of the Wetlands Protection Act for um, land subject to coastal storm flowage. There are standards established in the Falmouth Wetland Regulations and the Section 5 details how we meet all those standards. But really, the work within the floodplain is all temporary construction activity within the gravel parking lot that will be restored to pre construction grades and conditions. So that there'll be, um, you know, which will yield no change in the horizontal or vertical extent of flooding, no redirection of flood flows, and no change in the flood water velocities. Um, and I don't think, you know, this is really just the con conclusion or summary of what we just said. Uh, but you know, with this, I'm trying to keep it brief since it's similar to what you all heard two months ago. Um, you know, with this, we respectfully request an order of conditions allowing the project to move forward. And with that, um, we're available for any questions. Thank you, sir. You can stop sharing if you would, please. Okay, great. Thank you. Jen? Yes, Mr. Tremoon. Do I? Do I, did you have to go through MEPA for this one like you did the last one? Yes, we've um, submitted the, the um, single EIR. That um, certificate is actually due out today. We haven't received it yet. We expect it tomorrow. Okay, and Natural Heritage hasn't responded on, on, the, on the EIR? They responded on the EENF. Um, okay. We haven't seen their comment letter on the EIR. Um, the comment letter on the ENF identified uh, the state listed species as being the uh, the terns. Did they um, give you any time of year restrictions on that? They they did, and they would be the same time of year restrictions that we put in the notice of intent and that I that we saw in the okay. letter that came out on April five yeah. uh, for the previous project. So excellent. Okay, just because. Um... Um, usually we wait till the uh, the natural heritage letter comes in on our end, but yeah. I know these kind of projects are fairly fluid, so we'll just write the time of year restriction into the order for you. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. And obviously, um, you're requiring Chapter 91 for this as well. Yes, this requires the the full gamut uh, Chapter 91 water quality certification, yeah. Army Corps of Engineers and um, Cape Cod Commission uh, development of regional okay. impact because it required an EIR. Okay, and just for clarification, when you were talking about all the different cables that were going over to the venue, they said the 99 and the 97 cable came from, aren't those for, off of Elm Road, not Mill Road? 91 and 97 are off of Elm Road. Elm Road, okay. Um, 75 was off of Mill Road, and then the 99 is off of um, Surf Drive and Shore Street. You said the nine, okay. Yep. Okay, all right. 
Which ones were off of Elm again? 91 and 97. Okay. And this one is the replacement for the 91. So that that will get shifted over. Um, oh, it's getting shifted over yeah. to Mill. Yeah. That's where I was getting confused. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. I was just right. like, and, wait and, a minute. And, and the reason for that is that you, you can see the work area that's identified in the Mill Road parking lot for the HDD setup. And yeah. there's there's really no workspace over along Elm Elm Road. No, yeah. uh, I remember when it, that up. I remember years ago when we did Elm Road and then Mill. Yeah. I think I've been around for most of these. So excellent. Yes. Thank you, Dwight. You're welcome. Uh no more questions. All right. Ms. Bergeron. I have no questions. Thank you. All right. Commissioner comments. Kevin, you ready? We're going to start with you. Uh, no, no questions. Mr. Yeah. All right. Steve. Oh, thank you for the presentation. I don't have any questions. All right. Betsy. So I've been around for a bunch of these too. But <laughs> my question is, is, this is just a curiosity question. When did electricity first go from we'll call ourselves the mainland over to Martha's Vineyard in cables. I mean presumably had they had a different way to generate electricity before these cables got put in. Uh, um, the earliest chapter 91 license that I found for a electric cable was in the 1940s um, and that went okay. from uh, down by, over by Woods Hole, by Nobska, over to Tisbury. Mm. And that right. one's been replaced a few times. And then there was a cable from Elm Road over to Tisbury installed in the 50s. Um, and that's presumably this, this uh, 91 cable that's been replaced several times. In fact, the cable that's there right now that was installed in 1986, we don't see any uh, chapter 91 license for it. And I think that's because it was I installed as a replacement cable, as a replacement project for the pre-existing cable that went from Elm to to, to Tisbury. <laughs> um, because you can, you can, chapter 91 licenses do allow the replacement of a project. Um, and certainly before the 1988 regulations were issued, it was much easier to do replacement projects. Okay, thanks very much. You're I uh, sympathize with all the state and federal um, uh, permits that you need. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Good. So thank you, Jamie. All right, Courtney. So I also have a curiosity question. Um, <laughs> and uh, my, my question actually, I think the, uh, the techniques that you're employing to uh, lay, lay the cable and so on, are much more environmentally um, friendly than older methods. Uh, and I'm sure you've mapped the seafloor very well, but what, what do you do when you encounter some kind of massive glacial re uh, erratic? Right, what, what we're proposing for this project um, that was described in the notice of intent is to first do a plow, a pre-pass with the plow. And that is without the cable, is to run the, the hydroplow along the, the route to see if there's any areas of um, where the design depth cannot be met. Um, okay. um, that, that's the first thing, because we did talk about doing geotech borings, but the problem is you can only place those every you know couple of hundred feet, and that leaves a lot of seafloor unexplored. Um, so we decided to do a pre to do a pre pass uh, number one. Then number two is if the cable can if we do find um, a, an erratic or an area that's too uh, dense, we've identified in the notice of intent um, the techniques we we identified as the contingency um, plan and um, the technique one would be either like a, a concrete um, mat that goes over it to protect mm -hmm. it, or it could be gabion bags, or it can be rock coverage. For NEPA and CZM comments, 
we assumed a 30 foot wide rock protection over any length of area that would be needed. Um, the 75 cable that was installed 10 years ago did actually out um, in the middle of the sound, a little closer to Tisbury. Um, there was a, a, about a 15 foot section that was exposed with the post construction survey because of a glacial erratic. Um, and that was covered by um, sandbags and gravel that was only 12 feet wide. Um, so the contingency plan for MEPA and CCM, we assumed 30 foot wide just to be overly conservative in um, potential impacts for a contingency if needed, uh, with the idea that we probably don't need anything that robust based on the case study 10 years ago. Yeah, I, I presume you'd figured all of this out, but I just like, I think it's good for people to uh, understand this. Yes, thank so you. Thank you. I have no other questions. All right. Good project. Amazing what goes into a project like this, isn't it? Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So we can close this, right, Jen? Yes. Okay, then I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. For a second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. If there's nothing further. All right. We're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Good night. All right. Next up, Town of Falmouth, zero, Catherine Lee Bates Road, which is in this case, Shiverick's Pond, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a sidewalk, ADA compliant deck walkway, viewing platform, and a seasonal kayak launch, and to request for a variance from FWR. 10.53-2-E-3 and the quorum excludes Betsy tonight. Oh, so we have a quorum. Excellent. So Mr. Chairman, this was re-advertised. This is a continued hearing. This is was re-advertised so that we could advertise the variance request, which we did need a variance from the square foot um square foot restriction on the end of the fishing player platform this is a community project it is meant for um the public so obviously the platform does need to be a little larger than that 100 typical square feet um so the town is um requesting the variance um through an overriding public benefit Jed Cornick is here from the planning department if the board has any questions and if you'd like me to put the plan back up if you don't remember it Mr. Chairman I can share my screen real quick for the board just so you all remember what we are talking about let me bring this up real quick uh, let's do this enlarge my screen and can everybody see that? Yes. Yep. So this is the platform, the fishing platform right here um, for the public use. This is a future kayak launch that the uh, town may or may not um, come back for an amendment uh, for in the future. Um, and then over in this area, the board will be seeing a future notice of intent for the creation of an access park and um, public amenity over here in this um, wooded area next to that. So when all the different phase of the, phases of this project are complete, it will be a nice um, improvement to the entire Shivrick's Pond area. May I stop sharing, Mr. Chairman? 
Yes, thank you. So all I right. think that's all we have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Jed, do you have anything you'd like to offer at this point? Uh, no, the only kudos to Jen for summarizing that very well. <laughs> all right. All right. I'm going to poll for questions anyway. Courtney? Uh, I have no questions. Okay. Good project. Kevin? Oh, sorry. Kevin? No questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Steve? No questions. Let's get this done and move on to the other phases. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jen, is everything in the public chat function, please? Doesn't appear to be anything in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make, um, I believe the first motion we need to do is grant the variance, is that correct or not? Or do we vote? What's the process? You vote to close the hearing and take it under advisement, Courtney. Okay, so we're not, we don't grant the variance at this point. No, you'll do that when you see what are the conditions. Yep. So I'll move to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Pat and second. All right, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. There's nothing further. All right, we're voting. Courtney. Uh, Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous with this quorum. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Jed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jed. Thank you. All right. Next up, our continued request for a hearing under a notice of intent. The first one has been previously continued. That brings us to J. David and H. Jane Preston, 50 Weatherglass Lane, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to reconstruct the paved right of way within its legal limits, install drainage, relocate the existing shed, install a modular wall with a fence, and install restoration plantings. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have Attorney Lawler. Hang on one second, Mr. Chairman. I have promoted Attorney Robert Lawless, who is representing uh, the Virgins. I've promoted Attorney Del Preet, who is representing, I believe, the neighborhood. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> dirty debris. And then I just had attorney Lawler and I see he's there. Oh, there he is. He's in here. Yeah, right and attorney here. Lawler. Sorry <laughs> about that, attorney Lawler, who is representing um, the property owner at 50 Weatherglass, uh, Mr. Preston. This is a continued hearing. Um, it involves the relocation of the um, paved easement right of way, not quite sure the legal technical term for it and the relocation of the sh uh, the shed on a, uh, Mr. Preston's property and the removal of some unpermitted fill. And I don't know who would like to start. Um, we also, is, uh, is Raul on? Oh, yes, Raul. Oh my goodness, I forgot about Raul. <laughs> Sorry about that, Raul. I'm coming. <laughs> Can you all guess that Jen's going on vacation? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, left on vacation. I did not already leave. <laughs> sorry about that, Raul. There he is. It's going to be lost without him. Thanks, pal. Oh, <clears throat> Raul, well, you're up, sir. Um, as indicated, I represent uh, the Prestons, uh, David and Jane Preston. And uh, this is hopefully the end or close to the end of a long kind of process that's been going on. Um, as you know, that there had been an order of conditions for some fill to be removed. Subsequent to that, there was an issue when uh, a neighbor um, discovered that an old roadway was actually on their property layout. Litigation was filed in the land court. Uh, the case was mediated um, with um, 
Bob Lawless representing the Bergens, uh, John Del Preet representing the rest of the Weatherglass neighborhood, for lack of a better term, um, uh, with the assistance of these uh, gentlemen, um, we reached what we think is an equitable solution to the problem uh, that faces that neighborhood. And um, that's being presented to you or has been presented to you. I'll let Raul explain the details on the actual plan. I believe you have each seen the proposed settlement uh, that was entered into in the mediation. Um, and that was explained to the um, the justice of the land court, though that settlement is, you know, part of the mediation. It's um, the um, the intent of this is to essentially uh, cut that portion of the roadway uh, or access way, whatever you want to call it, um, asphalt out in a triangular fashion off the land of the Bergens that had, you know, their land that was uh, as per their their deed and uh, and and the uh, other documents recorded at the Brownsville Registry of Deeds uh, remove that, return that. The Berg, I mean, the Bergens would return that to its natural state. The um, remaining portion of the road um, would, I mean, and then the uh, Prestons would return the elevation under the the existing uh, order conditions and the plan that is before you to its uh, natural state. The Bergens would remove most of the remaining roadway and replace that with a newer roadway with the bottom as indicated by Raul. There is a, uh, Bob Lawless will talk about it and I'll, I'll take uh, blame for it, a small cut line on the road that we may, um, really isn't demonstrated on the plan. I, I would hope that maybe if we explain that, that that could be something if, if approved would be, you know, subject to just staff, just moving a line a couple of feet um and um and that's the situation we've uh, i'll let raul go over the plantings the mitigation and uh and uh the whatnot but i uh, i think i speak for uh, attorney lawless and attorney del preed in that general narrative um we tried to mirror the agreement that you have and were supplied with um and i'm more than uh, happy to field any questions or if, if, if bob or john want to jump in if you correct anything i've said i'd obviously welcome that uh, I just, I, at some point, there are three small little points that we're in agreement on that just weren't reflected in this last plan for whatever reason. And I'm happy to quickly highlight them because they're not, I don't think that they're deal breakers. I don't think that anyone disagrees with us. The first one is where the cut line will be. If you look at the existing plan, the cut line is way up on weather glass. They called it the saw cut area. In fact, it's it's further down. I'm going to say about five to seven feet. There's actually a line on the existing plan where the Excuse 12. Me, Attorney ahead. Lawless, I don't mean to interrupt, but the boards, uh, they may not have the plan in front of them. So if I Raul see. could bring up the plan, we could visualize where, oh. where you're talking about. I apologize. Sure. Raul, do you mind no sharing problem. your plan, please? Thank you. I think it would just make it easier for the board to follow your points, Attorney Law. I hear you. I hear you. Thank you. So looking at the lower plan where the new 20-foot right-of-way, it's called, it's really 10-foot in width. The right of the 20-foot re refers to the total width of the of the legal right-of-way that exists on this path down here. The new macadam will only be 10 feet. The intent is to replace all, all that is there, except uh, starting, if you look at the near the right-hand portion, near the top of the new right-of-way, you'll see an elevation of 12. That's really where the cut line will be. Yep, you've circled it perfectly. That's where we intend to have the cut line and then everything towards the water will be new. All of the macadam uh, to the is that the east will remain. So that's point number one. Point number two is all along, my client currently has along his 
um, along the, the paved right of way where it exists right now, he has a fence. So his intention is, is to install a fence along the new uh, property line where this, so really it's right along the, the border of the new paved right of way. So he intends to have his fence there. It was supposed to show up on this plan. And the third question, so that, that's where he has currently, it says picket fence. That fence will then show up all along the boundary of the new paved right of way. And the last issue is just the limit of work. According to the sketch plan here, the limit of work goes way over um, onto his property. And my client is, is asking and requesting that really the limit of work should be down closer to the boundary of where the new paved right of way will be. Because he's gonna remove the pavement in that area and then secure it with the appropriate that's mentioned in, in, the, in the plans uh, to stabilize the bank so that really the limit of work is, is along the boundary. Those are the three points that I wish to make. Um, right. If I could carry on, um, for the record, Raul is starting from Cape and Islands Engineering, um, representing the applicant as well. Um, so yeah, th those three um, pointers, um, th those could easily be adapted for the project. Um, the submittal of revised documents or additional documents included the revised site plans. Um, it's two sheets. So there was a revision to sheet one, which is the one that I'm currently sharing with the screen. That revision date is of 5-8-23. And there are several revisions that we did to that plan. One of the things that was um, noted in the first hearing was, could we install some sort of physical barrier to prevent um, trailers or boat trailers to be um, unloading um, boats at this site? Um, it was talked about boulders. So that's what we chose to do for this um, revision. On the plan, we show two proposed boulders um, just, just south or just downgrading from the existing, the proposed um, drainage system. That way the boulders do not collect any debris or leaf litter that will plug the, the, catchment, the catch basin. So we proposed two boulders at that location to prevent the use of this access way as a boat ramp. Another change that we did to, to the plan is the planting area now extends into the property on lot six. That was a request from staff to compensate for the existing um, generator pad that is at this location of the house. So this is three times the size of the, the footprint of that um, generator pad. The original plan that we submitted included that the shed was going to be relocated right in front of the existing location. So originally it was shown at this location. There was a comment at that first hearing that that location may not be an adequate location. It is closer to the wetlands than the primary structure. And it is also within five feet of the property line. So in talking with the homeowner, the shed has now been relocated um, to this location on the opposite side of the property. So it's now closer to the resources than the existing primary structure. Um, and it's further than five feet from the property line. Um, another change we did to, to this plan has to do with some of the species that were called out. Originally, the planting species that we called out on this plan um, included a lot of low growing shrubberies or plants. Um, a couple of comments came through staff and at the first hearing in regards to the creeping juniper and the huckleberry. Um, since then, we revised the list of planting species um, and staff can talk to that if, if they have any particular concerns with the new list that we provided. But those two in particular were removed from the proposed planting list. On sheet two of the site plan, so the revision for that, um, there was some comments about 
um, erosion control during construction so that no exposed soil is left behind during installation. So we added um, these notes for grading and erosion control. That's to protect um, the resources during construction so that no wash off of sediments go down towards, towards the wetlands and towards the salt marsh. Um, there was a comment about what is the amount of volume that we're calculating. So at this location, we show the 164 cubic yards of fill that's going to be removed. Um, that was the fill that was done previously. Um, and this amount of material is being dug out to allow for the new construction of the um, easement or the way, and also to restore the grades on um, within the um, the easement area. Those are mainly the, the revisions to the plans. We submitted, or the attorney submitted the agreement, and they also submitted the logistic plans of who's going to be doing what um, and who's going to be in charge of doing what particular task. Um, and that sums up this application and this continued hearing with the revised documents. If there's any questions or if someone else from the team needs to add some comments to this project, um, feel happy to do so. Uh, <clears throat> That's right. uh, if, if I may, did, uh, um, since we got that plan, a couple of the neighbors have uh, indicated their concerns. And one is with the, the location of the boulders. Um, they understand that the, the board can make the decision where they want them. They would just like them closer to the end where they, near where the, uh, the, the, the pavers go in so that they don't have to drag their kayaks and, and dinghies that they go out in on Green Pond uh, as far as it looks on the plan. The second is one, I believe Jennifer got a, an email from um, Caitlin Kelly regarding the planting of the pasture roses. I know nothing about pasture roses, um, but she had con some concerns about that particular plant going in. And th those are the only two comments from the neighbors. <clears throat> so they effectively want to use that as a boat ramp? No, they, they currently use it. They, they want to use it as they currently use it. They bring their uh, and I myself back my truck down and drop my uh, rubber raft in to take my nine-year-old granddaughter out onto Green Pond. That's the current use. That's what they've been using it for for the last 40 years. And they still want to be able to bring their kayaks down, not to launch boats, not to put in trailers, but to just do what they've been doing. Raul, could you put the plan up one more time for me? So I can yes. see the location of the boulders. And uh, Attorney Del Perry, what was the name of the woman you said sent me an email on the Prastor Rose? Uh, Caitlin Kelly. Kelly as in K-E-L-L-E-Y or L-L-Y? Uh, L-L-Y, I believe. Nothing? Caitlin with a C or a K? A C. find anything. Um, Raul, what is the distance between where the boulders are and where the pavers are? That's roughly 15 feet. Preston's have no objection to that. Well, the staff might have an objection. To I'm that. just letting it, there were a lot of parties. <laughs> I understand, Jennifer. <laughs> Thank you, Raul. You can stop sharing. <laughs> Raul, you're very good at that. <laughs> Thanks. The only reason I chose that particular location, I just wanted to clear the catch basin because yeah. I know when you have boulders like this, they do collect debris, and I don't want that plugging. So moving it further from the catch basin, I'm fine with, so long as the commission is so. Well, I want to make sure the drainage system, the pavers and everything are not adversely affected by any vehicle traffic. That was the concern the staff had about repaving what's there. Um, 
but I can speak, Mr. Chairman, when you're ready for us to comment. You're up. Okay. So, Raul, we're going to need a revised plan to show that correct cut line. So, if the cut line where you're showing the gray and Attorney Lawless is saying that the cut line's actually where that contour is, we're going to need a revised plan from you. Not quite sure what the issue is with the pasture rose, Attorney Del Preet, but um, you know the board can discuss the plantings um, in their um, deliberations. Um, Attorney Lawless, it's my understanding you said that the Virgins would the Bergens would like uh, to install a post and rail fence along the pavement of the right of way on their property. Correct. Along the the, the new recognized property line in other correct. words right right along the new pavement correct so we're of the similar the similar nature of what they have right now okay that's fine raul can you put that on the plan as well and then you want a revised limit of work so that will have to be on a revised plan as well um, and the reason I'm requiring all this is there are way too many cooks in this kitchen, and I want to make sure that everybody is on the same page, whatever contractors go on that site have the correct page and we're not, you know, ad-libbing or adding things to a plan and conditioning a plan. So I think it would be much better if all of the elements were correctly drawn on a plan um, so that when the different contractors from the different parties are working, everybody understands what is to happen. Somebody just moved. All my little squares went squeakily. Oh, Raul's got his hand up. That's why. Um, the only other question I have is in regards to the logistics um, what was it referred to as a logistics sequence or logistics what plan. was it? logistic plan logistic timing logistics whatever. Plan. Whatever. Or was logistics the framework timing is missing from all of that that's what we noticed was the timing there's no um timing I, to it. Well, I mean the it, we <coughs> Construction really couldn't start until the fall. I mean, it's going to be used by the neighborhood in the summertime. Okay. Uh, I know that's important, <laughs> Attorney Del Pre right. and his numerous right. clients. I know we, we're we're ready to get started. My client would like to get started, so I don't. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I mean, but, but I, I don't, don't know why we. Can you guys oh. please stop talking over each other? I was just going to say I, I was I was still talking. Um, the issue is I understand. That situation. I know that Attorney Del Preet has 13 or 14 clients who only use this pathway in the good weather. Um, the time to hire contractors at this point, we don't have one hire. Um, we anticipated, based upon in, spot, in speaking with John, that it was always his position that if we couldn't get this thing done in the summertime, and don't I don't want to speak for you, John, uh, that we would bump it into the fall so people could use it. It's primarily his clients that use the pathway. Um, my client lives on the water and the Bergens live on the water and they have their own access. Uh, Mr. Del Preet's clients don't, and this is their access. So we had always, um, certainly I had always in discussions with John, respected the neighborhood and understood, and my clients, not me, and respected the neighborhood and understood that they wanted to accommodate their neighbors and, you know, it's already, what's today, the 17th of May. I mean, this, any construction would be right in the heart of the season. We would propose that, you know, construction starts sometime in mid to late September and, you know, and be finished before, you know, there's a, you know, we can still get plants in the ground in the fall. That's the intent. And then to have the sequency run from mid to late September into the fall, and then hopefully this thing can all be, wrapped up in a few weeks in the fall uh with the hiring of a contractor at that point i mean that's our understanding we would we would have the preference we were hoping to have this done this spring i mean if you see the date on the settlement agreement it was quite some time ago 
And the problem has been getting feedback from everybody to get the plans drawn. And we would like to have in the fall would be great because, you know, the normal time that we use it is during the summer. I may be heard. The, my clients, this original matter came before the board in 2000, October 2017, and they want to get it done. And they have been in touch with contractors and contractors can be brought in. And this can be done in a pretty quick and swift manner. And so we're just asking that it be expedited. The, the, um, the board has previously granted my clients the permission to remove the pavement. That expires in October. So I'll leave it at that. Mr. Lazardi. Yeah, um, just one comment on the limit of work. Um, we can always revise the plan to show the limit of work. Um, so from what I understood, the limit of work is being sought to be all along the property line. Now, right. all of this area, is existing pavement to be removed. We currently show the limit of work to go outside of that existing pavement because we have to remove it. Removing it exposes bare soils until that bare soil is contained, knowing that the size of this pavement still slopes towards the, the water. I thought it's, it makes sense to have this limit of work. There could be a secondary limit of work along the property line, but I do feel like unless the board feels that we don't need this, this limit of work on the north side of the existing pavement, um, I, I feel myself that it is needed. I agree with you, Ralph. All right. Jen, um, I didn't know if you were done or not, so. Well, again, the, the staff's concern is yes, we got, we got the logistics framework, I have it up now. But obviously, there's still an issue with the parties on the timing of when this is all going to happen. So what I don't want to happen is for, you know, some pavement to be removed on, let's say, the Bergen's property, but not all of the pavement where the saw cut line is going to be or whatever. I mean, this project needs to be completed. Um, and to move along. We can't just have, you know, one of the parties doing their section and then having it exposed for six months while the summertime's here and then have the rest of the project move forward. It does need to be kind of, it, once it's started, it needs some momentum and it needs to be completed within a time frame. Um, so that's kind of when the last hearing we were asking for this kind of logistic sequencing, we wanted some time frames in there too, when this is going to happen, because like the last hearing, there apparently still is a disconnect between the parties of when all of this is going to happen. So that is a concern of the staffs. And oh, with, with one, a position. one more oh, question. Oh, oh, don't interrupt. One more question. And if I'm interrupting, I'm sorry. Attorney Del. Where'd you go? Well, did he? I'm sorry. Oh, she's there. I'm, sorry. I'm having trouble seeing the little squares tonight. Um, what was the pasture rose comment, sir? I couldn't find the email you were referring uh, to. She was concerned with the way that it that it tends to overgrow and and the need to trim it back and maintain it. I really don't know much about pasture roses, but that okay. was what I understood her concern to be. Okay. Okay. Understood. Thank you. That's all, all right. I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Ms. Bergeron. Thank you. Uh, just one comment for Raul. Um, I certainly don't want to muddy the waters of this project with the many parties involved, but Raul, I'm still lacking a little clarity on the shed and the float and their permanent history. Um, we can certainly address those separately. I just don't want those to get lost in the shuffle. I can address those now or later. It's up to the board. Sure. Go ahead. Um, with respect to the floats, I, I I got involved in this because of litigation. I do zoning and whatnot, but I uh, suggested my client hire um, 
um, Council and Falmouth, you're probably familiar with, I believe he's in the process of doing that and looking and trying to research the the history of the float to determine um, he was of the opinion that it was fully permitted correctly. And he's trying to figure that out. Obviously, the records don't reflect that. So he's in the process. He's not ignoring it. And with respect to the shed, I believe that the um, Raul indicated that the uh, the shed is being moved to the uh, on the other side of the property, no closer to the resource. The shed had initially been, or a different shed, <clears throat> had actually been closer to the resource and then moved back to its present location, still within the right of way. And under the agreement, uh, it it's, uh, obviously has to be moved out of the right of way. And in looking at various locations, uh, the least, um, initially we wanted to put it up front, but it can't be that close to the uh, roadway for various um, zoning reasons. And um, the end uh, where Raul indicated where it was hopefully going to go uh, is where we would um, on the plan earlier, uh, about uh, half an hour ago, 20 minutes ago, uh, is where the, the shed would be relocated. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, I couldn't see it in aerials, but perhaps it was just wooden and under the tree canopy many years ago. And I can guarantee you that on the uh, the dock float issue, that is not being ignored. Okay. He is in the process of ignoring it. Perfect. Uh, thank you for the clarity. Mr. Uh, Attorney Lawler, just to, to, to jump in here on the float issue, it, it does need to be resolved. So we'll, we'll put kind of a reminder on our calendar for the next, let's say, month or two. We'll, we'll make it, yeah, go I, back I mean, with I'll... you regarding the float issue. And if we don't hear anything, we're going to have to take additional action regarding the float so just so we're clear with that you know if, this if, can't drag on forever if there's anything that if there's anything i've made clear with my client this the issue with the float must be dealt with and it must be dealt with in an efficient and appropriate manner yes thank that's you. very clear jennifer thank you okay thank you <laughs> i'm still Wallace. Very, very briefly, one, one of the problems that we had in coming up with specific dates and times is that we it, it's the idea of hiring a contractor and then getting everything done. My client's willing to have the board sort of set what you are deeming to be when it should be started and maybe a timetable in terms of generally when it should be finished. But as we all know, coordinating and getting contractors out there is not something that you can simply pick a date and say, okay, we can start tomorrow because we don't, we don't know that. But given we have differences about when it should start, but my client's willing to live within the parameters of what the board recommends. And, and with respect to that, it may not appear that, but attorney Lawless and I um, get along pretty well and have coordinated pretty well with each other. So if we can pick a start date, assuming that he and I are both still involved, I think we can coordinate a schedule between the contractors and with, a, with the assistance of the clients to make sure that, and I want to pick it, I'm not even going to pick a month. Say we pick, we agree to start on the 15th of the month that we'll allocate, you know, three weeks to complete one section of work, whether it's removing the pavement and or 10 days or whatever it might be. And then, uh, you know, the next phase would be the next 10 or 15 days, depending on weather. And then we would hopefully wrap it up in the next 10 or 15 days uh, with plantings and things like that. I'm, I have no idea. I'm not a contractor. I don't know how long these things take. Um, but I do know it, with the coordination uh, that Attorney Lawless and I have worked on this and, and several other cases, I, I don't see a problem as long as the two of us are still in the picture. So why wasn't this worked out in the agreement? Pardon me? Come on, let's just move on, Jamie. Oh, and I, I said, I, said right. I, I prefaced that it doesn't seem like it, but I did preface it. <laughs> all right, Alyssa, are you all set? I don't know if I cut you off. All right, Commissioner Comments, we're starting with Steve. Uh, Chancellor, um, I'd like to see what comes in the next as the route revised plans. Um, the final Thank you. Betsy. Yeah, I definitely 
we this definitely needs a continuance. Raul <laughs> has to give us a new plan. I agree with him completely that we can't be cutting the pavement and then leaving it for six months. So I don't see this project starting until the fall, but I think I would like to see the the parties agree that it will start, you know, give a start date like September 15th. And if, if this is not, I am involved in, in construction in wetland areas. And this is not, and there are several construction people on the board here. This is not a huge project. And if you had one contractor, this project could be done probably in Jamie and Courtney, what, four weeks? Yeah. And so you're going to have more than one contractor. So maybe it'll take twice as long. But this is not a difficult thing to do. Let's just agree you're going to start September 15th and give us a time from that point on. And you're going to be completed in November. And you can have a neighborhood party there with a new area. I also agree with Raul that the that those blocks should be should be placed so it doesn't affect the drainage. And if stuff gets there and they can actually be used as a buffer to catch stuff as it comes down there, but it doesn't impede the, the drainage area. So this is uh, attorney Del Preet, your neighbor, your neighborhood would like to use this. It's gonna be better when it's done. So let's all get on board. Let's say September 15th, We'll all go down there and have a party in on, in November fifteenth. That's all, Jamie. That's enough. <laughs> all right. Can you hear me? Cor um, you calling on Courtney? Yeah, I it was silent. Um, I agree with Betsy, I, and I'm one of the contractors on this board. You know, you, you just, all you got to do is line it up and do it. And it has to be done at once. And early September sounds like a terrific idea. And the only other question I have is you've got these boulders that are supposed to be a deterrent to uh, people backing their trailers down. So when you do the revised plan, I'd like to have you become more specific about how big these boulders are? Um, I heard there's a guy that lives in the neighborhood and his name is Goliath. So he could probably move those boulders around pretty easily. <laughs> so uh, we want to make sure they're big. We want to make sure they're big, big enough to be a deterrent to trailers. That's my only uh, comment. It's a good project. You guys just got to get your act together and do it. And yes, I'll be down there and have a beer with you. <laughs> Just let Standing us know what it is. <laughs> All right. So notwithstanding the date, the start date, I wouldn't advocate for that. But uh, it would be a lot easier if there's somebody acting as project manager. There was one contractor or at least a project manager that could coordinate everything. Because the last thing we want is this, this to be done in pieces and open, you know, for, for a certain amount of time. So somebody needs to, to take the lead and make sure that this project gets start and finish in, in a specific amount of time. I mean, allowing for contingencies with, with materials availability and all that, but, but not, not start something this month and something else in a, two months from now, so on and so forth. Kevin. I'll come back to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first off, uh, I would agree with your comments 100%. Uh, secondly, gentlemen, I can only tell you that I was checking and um, about two weeks from now, I'm scheduled to be in front of the Board of Selectmen myself. Uh, to be interviewed uh, for consideration uh, for another term on the Conservation Commission. And uh, I'm starting to doubt my uh, 
uh, fervor for showing up and uh, doing my best. Thank you. <laughs> you always do your best, Kevin. <laughs> All right, Courtney, you had something up, something different? Yeah, I just, I wanted to second your comment um, about having a project manager on the job. And is there any way we can condition that in the order? Well, Courtney, this is gonna be, have to be continued. I hate to continue this project again, but I really think it's important with the possibility of several contractors being involved that we really do need a plan from Cape and Islands that everybody agrees on. There's no minor little points here and there that need to be changed. I really do think it's important because there are as many um, parties involved in this project as they are. I just wanna make sure that everyone is on the same page. Nobody wants to continue this no, I, I nobody wants to have to continue this. Thing. No, I agree. I agree, Jen. I just know in the past when we've we've conditioned them these things that we've wanted to know who the contractor was and coordinate things with them. I'd like to see that written into our order. Okay, so gentlemen, here's what we can do. We're going to continue this most likely to June seventh, if that works for Raul and he can get me a plan by May twenty fourth. I'm going to leave it to you the parties involved to come up with, as the chairman said, possibly a project manager. If this board and the staff do not have a clear understanding of the timing and who's involved and you know what's gonna happen and we still are unclear or uncomfortable with the vagueness, I guess, of what's gonna happen, we may have to require an environmental monitor to be paid by the parties to act on behalf of the commission to monitor this project. So I'm going to suggest that the three parties get together and try to lock down this um, sequencing so that the board does not have to um, require an environmental monitor over, you know, an oversight person on this project. It's such a small project. It shouldn't have to happen on this type of project. But again, we need to have a real um, comfort going forward. And that is still, I think, lacking with some of the commissioners and some of the staff. I hope that's clear. That was very well put. All right. Is there anything in the public chat function, please? One of the attendees has the, has their hand up, has not, has their hand up, hang on. Had their hand up and took the hand down. So I don't believe there's anything in the public chat. If anybody in the, uh, oh, Mr. Bergen. Okay, Mr. Bergen, I see your hand raised. Mr. Bergen, your hand is not raised again. If you would like me to promote you up to a panelist, please raise your hand. Okay, I'm promoting um, Chris Bergen up to a panelist. Mr. Bergen, you are uh, need to take yourself off of mute and turn your camera on if you'd like to address the board. Turn on your video. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bergen, you're off of mute so we can hear you. Um. Sir? Yes. There you go. Did you want to address the board? Yes, I do. I very much want to address the board. Okay. Um, this matter. <clears throat> Please do turn you have your a video camera, on. Sir? I'm sorry. I, I 
have said to put the video on. It actually says stop the video. Click that. Do you Army? have a little, do you have something over your camera, sir? Like a little piece of tape or paper or anything? Is that why it's not. blank? I do not. Okay. That's usually what I have. And that's what I look like. So. <laughs> you, you click on the stop video and it'll turn on your video. Okay, I clicked on the stop video. Not working, that's it. Not working. You might not have a camera. Anyway, go on, sir. All right, let's move okay. on. May, may I simply have 10 seconds? Um, I'm the one who has been doing a lot of work on this, trying to move it forward. I actually wrote the propose, proposed logistics framework. And I did that because I was speaking to contractors to get bids to actually do this job. And I have received two contractors quotes to do this job uh, this season and not to push it off till September to actually do it now and get it over with. And I think both of the people from those companies are qualified to act as a project manager. One of the first, I'll just go in order of who I received quotes from. One was from Francisco Taveras, and the person who made it was John Searles, I believe his name is. And the second one was from Cavosa Excavating. And the person's name on that quote was Shea Perry. Um, both of these gentlemen, recommended that only one contractor be used and they're ready to do it. And I, I think that um, putting it off to September 15th is going to let these contractors fill up their schedule with other work and this will just move off into next season. This has been going on for the first uh, enforcement order was in 2017. I mean, how long do you want to wait for this? We can make some arrangements for people to be able to get kayaks down the, um, uh, the right of way during the construction. I don't think that is a major issue. What I would like to do is to get an order of conditions so that we can get a start date with a contractor who can then fill in the interim dates and the final date and act as the project manager that you're looking for here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I'd agree if there's one company that's hired, then, then that would suffice as project manager. It was Agreed. implied there's gonna be several contractors involved. That's where the problem becomes, uh, um, well, that's where it becomes a problem with who you know who's running things. So, all right. So we have commission. Any more commissioner comments, questions? All right. There's. Is there anything else in the public chat function, Jen? Doesn't look like there's anything else in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. Raul, Thank do you, you think you could get me a plan and have all the parties agree to something by next Wednesday? Um. I just don't want to revise the plan and suddenly at the next hearing find out that another item was missing. So are we set with the not changing the limit of work or do we I would, want? Uh, I like your idea, uh, Raul, Attorney Lawless. Um, there does need to be a limit of work around that pavement when that pavement is removed. Once that area is stabilized, a secondary limit of work can be Understood. established along the right of way in the pavement, the relocated uh, right of way easement pavement, whatever you want to call it. Um, so would that be um, agreeable to your client? I, without speaking to him, I think so. Secondary. Sounds good. We'll yeah. stabilize so the that. Bank. Yeah, that area has to be stabilized. That limit of work needs to remain until the area is stabilized. Once it's stabilized, it can be removed. That secondary limit of work can be established before the area is stabilized. And then once it is, then that first one can be removed. That second one can stay. It doesn't need to be the first ones there, then removed, then the second one's there. So there may be two lines, two limits of work at some point during the 
uh, progression of the project, but of course the, the first one can be removed once the area is stabilized. Understood. Okay. Anything else, Raul? So yeah, so it will be those three revisions to the plan. A secondary limit of work, um, changing the socket line to where roughly elevation 12 is. Correct. Um, and the fence. Adding a fence, adding a fence to be, the existing one to be removed and a new one to be installed along the property line, which is also the edge of the new edge of pavement. Correct. And I have- Size of boulders. The size of the boulders to be added. How about the location of the boulders? There's been some talks about shifting I the like location. I like the location of the boulders right where they are, Raul. Sorry, Attorney Del Creek. But the board can decide if they want to move the, if they if the board wants to move the boulders, they can do that during the deliberation, and we can write that into an order. So, please. I can do those revisions by next week. Yes. Okay. Have you talked, uh, Mr. Bergen? Your 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 microphone's you still on, so we can hear you. Um. I. Uh, All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Um, I suggest you drop the the um, limit of work. Just leave it where it is. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. But again, I think we should start this project now. Mr. Bergen, we're going to yeah, give all that. the parties couple more weeks to figure this out. We're going to have a continuance until June 7th because I am not comfortable with the changes to the plans being written into an order. I'd like to see them on a plan so that everybody knows what's gonna happen, that all the parties involved know what's gonna happen, that all the parties involved agree to the plan. And then at the June 7th hearing, Hopefully the board will be able to close this and we can write an order of conditions. All right, thank you. Mr. Lawler, you have your hand up, sir? Yes, I do. Um, I just want to clarify, uh, Jennifer, I heard you say you needed um, the plan by the 24th, uh, but the logistics plan, does that have to be in by the 31st or because we have the meeting on the 7th, one week before the 7th? One week before this, I'm sorry, I, I forgive me. Again, Jamie's gonna say I'm on vacation mode. I keep losing that week of Memorial Day. Stop it, Jamie. Raul, you know when you need to get the plan in. It's the, the week of Memorial Day. My apologies, gentlemen. It's not okay, the 24th, no. it's the what, the 31st? My apologies. No, no, no reason to apologize. <laughs> I've been losing that week all week, actually. <laughs> Hopefully, you have a good memorial day. We always it. <laughs> Courtney. Yes, in the interest of moving this project on, I would like the, the um, all the parties involved to make a decision about the contractor they're going to hire uh, by the next meeting. So that issue is resolved. We know who it is because I think, given this thing, I think it's important that we know who the contractor is that's going to do the job. Well, I, we are, we're still looking at two contractors as far as... Well, I understand you're looking at them. I'm saying make a decision and so we can write it into the order. Okay. I'm not sure he's in it. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. you know, uh, that, I'm telling you what I, we want. So okay. you guys figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Oh, boy. All right. Anything else? All right. The date works for you. All right, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to continue this hearing till June 7th. Third second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this until June 7th. Is there anything else? All right, we're voting. Betsy. Glad filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. At night. It is unanimous. We have continued this until June 7th. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you, gentlemen.
Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next one, next hearing has, has been previously continued. Which brings us to 60, Cary Lane, LLC, 60 Cary Lane, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to conduct invasive species management and restoration and to Vista Prune according to FWR 10.1810B, Jen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Jen, can you re remove Mr. Bergen? I'm, I'm working on it, Betsy. I'm, I'm trying oh, to do everything I'm and sorry. people are talking to me. It's I'll okay. Wait. I can take this one, Jen. Thank you. I'll try to do this. Um, the applicant has requested a continuance until May 24th, as we do not have a quorum this evening. Okay. So... I make a motion to continue with this to May 24th. Second. All right. And for the purposes of continuing the quorum is irrelevant, the pre existing quorum that is. So we have a motion and a second to continue this until 524. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. That night. It is unanimous. We have continued this till 524. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up is Jeffrey P. and Cynthia A. Andrews, 34 Wigwam Road, Falmouth, Mass. For permission to reconfigure the existing driveway, install a Title V sewage disposal system, install drainage, construct retaining walls, conduct invasive species management and restoration, install DCPC restoration plantings, and all associated clearing, grading, and landscaping. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I believe Maria, Maria, are you doing this one solo? I am. Do you have the plan up? Can you share the plan? I do not have a plan. I was under the assumption they sent it to you guys. Okay. Uh, one second, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Maria yep. Hickey is going to be presenting this project, and I am still connected to the server. So give me one second, and I will bring this plan up for them. My apologies. Jamie, am I on this quorum? Yeah, this wasn't open. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. All right, uh, here I go, Mr. Chairman. Sorry about that. Take your time. I'm doing the best I can, Jamie. All right. I know you are. <laughs> You're the best. You deserve a vacation. You know that. You take <laughs> hey, one thanks. <laughs> Not quite sure it's really going to be a vacation. Okay, is that good? Uh, Great. Am I looking at Alyssa? Am I looking at the plan date, the ninth revised plan? plan yes, there's a there's a planting plan and a survey, but we might be able to get everything from this plan. Okay, so I'll start with the survey. There you go, Maria. You are up. Good evening, members of the board, Jan and Alyssa. For the record, my name is Maria Hickey, Maria Hickey Associates, and it's past my bedtime. <laughs> so I'm gonna get, get through this for you guys. Um, it's been a long night. Um, 
the applicants have recently purchased this home and we are here before you requesting permission to um, address some situations, flooding, DCPC, plantings, mitigation and restoration plantings, uh, and invasive species land management with habitat restoration. Um, hopefully you all had a chance to go out to this beautiful site. I'm sure that you noticed uh, one of my least favorite non-native invasive plants, which is English and Irish ivy. Absolutely everywhere on the property, along with bittersweet, honeysuckle, poisonberry vine. Um, it's really a problem. Um, the homeowner, since he bought the house, has had flooding in the driveway, it comes right down Wigwam Road, He's the lowest point on the road. There's only one house after him. Uh, and the water comes in the driveway and into the garage. I submitted in my narrative photos of a recent storm which shows the whole street flooded. Um, there are DCPC plantings that need to be installed. So part of our um, proposed project would be to remove the section of driveway that comes in from Wigwam as shown right in here. And- Maria, they can't see that. So I'm going okay. to be doing that for you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we're going to remove the section of driveway that comes in from Wigwam since it is the lowest point of the entire road and the property and install a berm or raise the grade and put some of our DCPC plantings in that area. We will additionally cut a new driveway in from the other section of Wigwam Road that's on much higher ground. So that resolves the problem of all the flooding that comes into the property and into the garage. The DCPC plantings will be planted in the berm and along a stretch that's parallel to Wigwam Road Currently, the area is overcrowded with cedar trees that are covered in ivy. And as you may already know that when ivy girdles itself into a cedar tree, it's extremely difficult to remove because the bark of the tree is soft. So when you pull the ivy, it removes the bark of the tree and the tree dies. Um, so I met with staff on site and with Mark Dibbs from Cape and Islands Engineering, and we all agreed the best thing to do would be to remove all the ivy and the cedar trees and replant uh, three new cedar trees in that area as it is already too overcrowded as it is. Um, there's a doghouse that will be removed. There's a cement retaining wall, for a lack of a better word, that will be removed. Um, as you move closer to the coastal bank, there's a cluster of trees. Each one is less than a foot from each other, completely enmeshed in Irish ivy, which is the uh, ivy that blooms flowers, which then form berries. The berries drop to the ground and you have more ivy. It is the worst thug in the neighborhood that you could have as far as ivies go. So we want to completely eradicate it and then replant trees. Um, when we go along the coastal bank, there are just a lot of bittersweet that's already girdling the trees. Um, so we're gonna do a remove and replace. And with the invasive species management plan, we will be replanting immediately after we move the non-native invasives. Um, the section of the property that has the new driveway coming in, um, we'll need to remove a retaining wall for that driveway to you know, obviously reach where the garage is. And what we're proposing is just to take that wall and turn it perpendicular um, to the house or parallel to the new driveway to retain earth. And we'll put more plantings up in there. Now, both sides of the driveway have very limited trees and almost no native understory. It's all invasive. So we really wanna put a big effort in um, to this area uh, to revegetate it, plant a lot of trees, native shrubs, 
um, so that what we're left with when we're done is a completely native site versus right now it's 90% non, non-native and invasive. And it pre- creates a really big problem when you're trying to put DCPC plantings in and you're surrounded by invasive vines and ivy. Um, Maria, can you hold that thought? Yeah. I'm just gonna move the plan down oh, sorry. for your planting plan now. Okay. So this is the area you're talking about next to Correct. the two driveways. Yep, both sides. Yep. Okay, and since we have to, um, since we'll be planting DCPC plantings and native shrubs, always in the order of conditions, is you must maintain your planting area free from non-native invasive vines and vegetation. And that becomes really difficult to do when you have (laughs) trailing infestations girdling everything. Um, So again, that's why we come before you with this project as a combination of restoring the property with natives. But before we even get to that point, remove the non-native invasive stuff, solve the flooding problem. Um, We also uh, will be installing a new septic. The current septic system has failed. Um, I know that Cape and Islands Engineering has provided all the numbers that show how we get uh, to our mitigation plantings. And then I know staff had a concern about some trees that had been topped back in 2018. Those are on another property. They're not on 35 Wigwam. And again, it was before my client owned the house. Obviously, we're not going to go onto somebody's property and trespass. Um, So... Our work is completely um, on 35, 30, excuse me, 34 Wigwam and the parameters of that job site. Um, We look forward to doing this project and really making a significant difference in flooding, native restoration and DCPC plantings. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Maria. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Alyssa and Emma did the initial site visit. Um, there was still some confusion that was uh, about exactly what was happening. Maria went and tagged the trees. We went back out there with myself, Alyssa, and Mark Dib and Maria um, just to kind of uh, like review the work. Um, we have, I think, a better understanding of what's going to happen now, um, but we did um, have a few um, lingering comments and questions, and I believe they they addressed those. Um, they sent responses to the staff report, I believe, today. Correct, Alyssa? Yeah, on those responses. I think the biggest issue I have, and and then we did get a response from Maria Hickey and Associates and Cape and Islands, was there was language in the original notice that could have been interpreted that they could start the restoration project, but not complete it. Um, And um, I was not comfortable with that language. So Maria, can you speak to how, I mean, is this project gonna be phased? If it is gonna be phased, we may want to see a phasing plan. Um, I know that you said it may be done in phases, but we're unclear what those phases are. Um, But we need some assurance that if, the, the applicant is going to begin this invasive species removal project, then the invasive species are removed and then the area is replanted and not, you know, the invasive species are removed and then we're not gonna do the replanting because the way the original notice of intent was written, it, it, it was vague and unclear and could be interpreted either way. I did email to you and Alyssa last night, Mm -hmm. a revised plan that had changed the language. You sent us a a statement that changed the language. Um, And I attached the plan. I rewrote, uh, I think it's the second paragraph of the plan that said the invasive species eradication would be immediately followed by the restoration plantings. 
So are they going to undertake all of this at once or Correct. is it going to be phased? It is my understanding it's an all or a nothing, which is what um, Alyssa had written asking me to rephrase, that they either do the entire restoration and replant it right away or they don't do it at all. Alyssa, I think I answered that clearly in the language of the revised plan that I sent you last night and then a subsequent email. And then I believe Cape and Islands also sent an email, but I wanted to be very clear that we're not gonna remove everything and then let it sit there for two years. That would, it would defeat the whole purpose. The stuff comes growing right back. You have to remove and then replace and replant. Okay. So there's not gonna be any phasing. To, you're not gonna do this no. in phases. No. Okay. Because if your client did want to do it in phases, it's fine. We just would like some clarification on what those phases are going to be. Correct. Okay. I think that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Ms. Bergeron. Thank you. Um, just to add one more point to that, Maria, I did get your revised statement. I didn't see the plan, but I'll check my email again. I might have got lost in the shuffle. Um, I thought you had mentioned maybe including something in which you know, if there was, um, if it was too much to take on, perhaps a portion of it would be undertaken completely and maybe a portion not. Um, we're amenable to that. I think that makes a lot of sense if that was to be the plan. Um, so if that's the plan right now, uh, we can certainly incorporate that. If that changes later, there may need to be an amendment okay. to just authorize portions of it to be brought to fruition. I believe I attached as an attachment okay. to revise um, land management plan. It's right in the second paragraph. Okay, yeah, I saw the word doc. I just- um, The word doc, but then there was a second one. And if there's gotcha. some reason, I, um, I'm almost positive I attached it, I'll resend it. Okay, I'll take a look. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right, commissioner comments. That's, excuse me, Betsy. No comments. All right, Courtney. No comments. All right, Kevin. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, Steve. No additional comments. Thank you. All right. All right. Just for clarification, if if the you got a revised um, uh, methodology that you attached the plan. So does that mean the plan's changed? Or is this the plan we're using? It's the plan that you're using, the language of the invasive species habitat restoration. There were two sentences that changed that said, in the invasive species eradication, we will it will be followed immediately by planting the restoration shrubs. Okay. Jen, is there anything in the public chat function, please? Nothing in the public chat, Mr. Chairman. All right. Any other comments or questions? All right. What are you thinking? Make a motion, close the hearing, and take it under advisement. Glad for Third and second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. There's nothing else. All right, we're voting. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Steve. No, aye. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy your night, Jen. Enjoy your vacation. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. All right, next up, request to amend an existing order of conditions. Mario Kula and Josephine D'Angelo, 9 Sycamore Street, Falmouth, Mass. Request to amend the order of conditions for Mass DEP number 25-4785 to reconfigure the proposed dwelling and driveway. Jen? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman. I remembered to promote Raul this time to present his <laughs> request to amend. Very good. Good evening for the record. Raul Lizardi from Cape and Islands Engineering, representing the applicant and property owners at 9 Sycamore um, Street in Falmouth. If I could share my screen. Yes, sir. So the project may seem familiar, and that's because in November, um, we received an order condition for a raise and rebuild, R-A-Z-E, uh, of an existing single family dwelling and build it in conformance to the building code flood construction requirements. Um, that order condition was issued in November. Order condition is 45-4785. Uh, in the process through the Board of Appeals, there was a lot of um, pushback for this project. So the applicant has gone back and reconfigured the proposed dwelling. So what we, we had before was an approval for a footprint of a house that was 1,008 square feet in footprint. It was elevated because it is in the velocity zone. So it was above the ground. Um, this has been reduced by about 33% in footprint to 654 square feet. The space that we used to have below the main house um, was going to be used for a carport or parking. That space is now lost with the proposed um, dwelling now. So what we have is a parking area in front of the house. The location of this proposed house now meets side setbacks, front setbacks, and rear setback. The approval from conservation in November was for a house that did not meet side setback and front setback. Um, so the main reason for this revision and this amendment request is to provide a house that is smaller that meets setbacks in terms of the FAMA zoning requirements. Um, one addition on this plan that was one of the conditions original from November was that it is likely there, there's gonna be dewatering required for this footing or the foundation of this house. So we have a dewatering basin proposed on the plan. There's a detail for that dewatering basin as well. We still have collection of roof, roof runoff with two trenches along the sides of the house. We also have a separate trench to collect runoff from the proposed driveway. Essentially, the project is the same as what was approved in November, but in a smaller scope in terms of a house. Um, that practically sums it up. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. I have the first question. Is this actually skewed? Yes. I'm getting dizzy from how late this meeting is going. Wow, that's interesting. Who needs a frame and square? Yeah. Sorry, Jen, you're up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Raul, I'm sorry, I was um, uh, looking Vacation. for something. Um, did you mention how the driveway is a little bit bigger because you're losing the driveway underneath the structure like you had before? Right, for zoning, we have to show parking for at least two, park two cars yeah. We we had it before underneath the house, underneath but we lost the, the space. Yes. Okay. So so the driveway is larger. That house is much smaller to meet the 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 zoning setback requirements. So you don't have to go back through zoning for a special permit. Correct. Um, there is something um, still needed, um, but I'll have to confirm. Attorney um, Clower filed mm -hmm. that. Okay. Um, I think it has to do with lock coverage, but not okay. setbacks. Okay, excellent. So um, this is coming in under, under an amendment. Um, the board has received, I think several uh, letters or emails, um, again, in opposition to um, this proposed project. It is being filed under an amendment and it is uh, the staff's opinion that it is within the scope of the original project and does qualify as an amendment. Um, that is the staff's opinion. Um, and I don't have any further questions or comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Bergeron. Thank you. Um, I think one of the other main comments that we received was regarding the 
uh, scope of the drainage on the property. And as our rule showed, there is drainage provided on each side of the home as well as by the driveway. And all of the driveway, both on the property and off, is being pitched towards that um, drainage leaching area. Um, I'm sure if there's any other questions, Raul can expand on um, the functions of that leaching trench. Thank you. Good point, Alyssa. Thank you. All right. Commissioner comments. Courtney. Other than designing skewed furniture to go into a <laughs> skewed house, I have no comments. All right. Kevin. No comments, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Steve. I think from conservation's perspective, this project keeps getting better. Betsy. No comments. Thanks, Jamie. All right. Um, all right. We'll open up to public comments. Jamie, I don't have anything in the chat, but I do have someone that has raised their hand, so I'll promote them up as a panelist. Um, it is, okay. and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. I am promoting a Heather Shadeg up um, as a panelist um, to address the board, and then I'll be promoting a Joe D'Angelo up to uh, address the board after. Um, Heather, you are promoted up to a panelist. If you unmute, um, you can address the board. You have a video. Yeah. Where? Not I can hear you anyway, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, I was uh, a curious question since the size of the driveway will be larger than uh, the previous plans had. Um, is there any change to the material that's being used uh, to facilitate the drainage? Or um, I'm just curious to see what, what that material would be. Raul? So the proposed driveway is still the same material as designed before. It is pavers. At the okay. edge of the low side of the driveway, which is the, the south and west side is where we're proposing a trench drain and that's what we're using to collect runoff and discharge it into the ground okay and then if it if it's not reabsorbed by the ground it just continues down the street right if it overcomes the drainage on a major storm event it goes back to the street okay thank you that was it Sorry, Thank I you. don't myself. The chat was disabled, so I couldn't type in my question. <laughs> Why is the chat disabled? It's been disabled Maybe all evening. Maybe it's just hers. All I can't right. now, but previously, as a non panelist, I couldn't. Yep, I've got it. I just did a test. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I'm yep. going to place you back into attendees now. Absolutely. Thank you. Not a problem. Uh, give me one second, Mr. Chairman. I'll change roles to attendees. Um, a Joe D'Angelo, if you'd like to address the board, can you raise your hand again and I'll promote you up to an, a panelist. Nope. I don't believe they, uh, if you want to raise, if you want to Address the board. Can you please raise your hand, Joe D'Angelo? Okay. Uh, I think that is it, Mr. Chairman. All I, right. just, I just put a chat in, so it's working on my end to all the uh, panelists. Um, and I could see your chat when you put it in. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we've addressed the public chat function. Any other questions or comments from the board? All right, Raul, do you have anything to add? 
All good. All right. So what I'll make a motion about? to close. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Third, second. All right. We have a motion and a second to close the hearing. If there's nothing else, we're voting. Betsy. Blood filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have closed this hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Raul. Hi, Thank Hi Raul. Good night, Raul. All right. Next up, our request to extend an existing order of conditions. First up is New Silver Beach Association, Inc. Zero, Moses Road, parcel and lot number 000, 93A through 93E, and 96, 97, and 98, North Falmouth, Mass. DEP number is 25-4555, requesting a one-year extension. Ben? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um... This is for beach maintenance activities. Usually it's commonplace for us to request and uh, recommend an extension. Um, I have had to have a discussion with this association. Unfortunately, the orders of conditions were not followed for the past several years regarding um, notification to the staff of when they are going to be out on the property. Um, I do believe their board of directors or their association officers have changed. I have had a discussion with the um, several members of the association board, as well as their um, new contractor for beach maintenance activities. I've stressed that if we do recommend a one year extension on this, that we do need to have that order of conditions followed. Um, so, again, I've met with several of the um, players involved in this, and I am recommending a one-year extension to see if the association can follow the orders of conditions that are applied to this project. So, um, I'm, I'm hoping that they can be followed. Again, I've met with a contractor. Um, and I mean, no, I'm going to have the um, association notify me as they should. And most of the contractors that do this type of work, really, it, it's very easy. They send me a text and, you know, to let me know they're going to be out there. And the important thing is that we know they're out there. So we don't have to, we don't get a call that there is some sort of machine on a beach. And then we have to send staff halfway across town to go investigate. So that's why that notification is very important because we have very limited staff time. But I am recommending that one year extension for this project. So moved, Gladfelder. Third, second. All right, any questions or comments? All right, the motion and the second on the table is to grant a one year extension. Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Third, aye. Matthews, I. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Aye. It is unanimous. We have granted a one year extension. Next up is Robert J. and Natalie Colgan, 133 Fay Road, Falmouth, Mass. DEP number 25 4528, requesting a one year extension. Ben? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am recommending a one year extension for this project. So moved, Gladfelter. Word second. All right. We have a motion and a second to grant the one year extension. Any questions or comments? All right. Betsy? Gladfelter, aye. Courtney? Word, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Steve? Ben, aye. It is unanimous. We have granted a one year extension. Next up, Michael C. and Ann L. Feenan, 
101 Lake Lehman Road, Falmouth, Mass. DEP number 25-4503, requesting a three-year extension. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman. This project, the staff would only recommend either a six-month or a one-year extension. Um, this was for, I believe, an addition um, or, or two additions um, to the project. Um, they undertook the work to build the additions within the first year of the order of conditions and then have not yet um, completed the mitigation requirement. I don't believe that mitigation should take an additional three years beyond the two years since they've completed what they actually wanted on the project. So um, it would be up to the board, but I would not extend this permit any longer than that one year. I like your six months better. Okay. I'll make a motion to extend this by six months. Second, second. O'Brien. Second. Wow. I counted three seconds there. <laughs> all right. We're all we're all with you, Jamie. Yeah. So we and have Jen a and Alyssa. A second, a second, and a second to grant a six month extension. Any questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Well, I felt her eye. Courtney. Her and I. Matthew's eye. Kevin. O'Brien, I. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have granted a six month extension. Next up, other business. Could, could I ask up. a question, Jamie? Or. So, Jen, just to make it clear so that everybody understands, if this isn't done in six months, it goes to an enforcement order, correct? Correct. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. All right, other business. Vote license agreement with Farming Falmouth for Community Garden at Peterson Farm. Jen? Yes, yes. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I sent you the draft license agreement that was um, drafted um, by your town council. This is um, a license agreement to um, allow um, Falmouth Farming to create, maintain, uh, and maintain community gardens in a portion of Peterson Farm. Um, I believe you, um, I think Mark gave a presentation of where these gardens were gonna be located. If any of you are familiar with Peterson Farm and the little red house that used to be up there, you head up towards Peterson Farm. On the right-hand side, there used to be a small little ranch style house um, that many years ago was taken down. That whole area um, is available for community gardens. It's separate from the Utopia Farm that's on the lower end of Peterson Farm that has the sheep and the pigs and the big fields that they are maintaining. Utopia Farm does have a 10 year, 10 year plus 10 year renewal, or maybe it's a 20 year lease with the town. Um, right now for those farming practices, this is separate from that. Uh, Farming Falmouth will be uh, responsible for the creation and maintenance of these um, community gardens. There's a parking, uh, you know, a parking area that they can use, again, away from the Utopia Farm uh, activities. It's up where the old water tower used to be. So I think this will, um, again, when we presented it, we think it's a great site. We've been looking at this site for many, many years to put community gardens in this area and it's finally coming um, to fruition. So uh, I would uh, hope that the board would um, vote to grant that license agreement. I will need you all to come in and sign it, um, but you can do that, you know, at, when, you're, when you're in town hall and then we can get that over to town council and they can execute it. And then Farming Falmouth can begin to create the community gardens up there. Ooh. So I'll make a motion to uh, enter the with this agreement with Farming, with Farming Falmouth, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Second, O'Brien. All right. We have a motion and a second. 
to approve the license agreement with Farming Falmouth. Steve? I just want to say uh, we had the community needs assessment hearings on the CPC last week, and they made a very strong presentation, a very impressive presentation. Uh, yeah, my agree, opinion Steve. of them uh, improved from, from a very high level. They're together. Good, great. Good, thank you for that. All right. So the motion and the second is to accept the agreement. Any other questions or comments? All right, Betsy. Blue eye filter aye. Courtney. Bird aye. Matthews aye. Kevin. O'Brien aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We have accepted the agreement. Next item under other business, a belated congratulations to our own Ms. Bergeron, who received, I hope I have this right, master's degree. Congratulations. So, so how long a contract with us did she sign? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We've heard that before. Fear. Jen Good trains fear. some beautiful people and we lose them. Yeah, exactly, Steve. You might be stuck right. with me for a while. I was talking of Good. beauty in, in the mental sense, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh. Alessa, you do a great job. We're glad to have you. We really are. Nobody's more right. happy to have her than I am. So we're going to make sure she sticks around. Um, Jamie, can you make um, the, the property owner with the order of conditions is in the attendees. Can you make an announcement that we voted that earlier this evening, please? Say that again, that we want property owner for zero Charles Lane is in the attendees list. I think he may have come in late after we voted his order. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. OK, okay. so for the record, um, under voting orders of conditions for zero Charles Lane, we voted an order of conditions earlier tonight with the correct quorum so that I hope whoever it was didn't have to wait all night to hear this. Um, but it was actually voted on and, and uh, an order of conditions was issued um, earlier this evening. Thank you, Jamie. So sorry for the confusion. All right. Last up. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it, Patton. Gladfelter, aye. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. O'Brien, aye. And Pat and I. Hey, not last but not least. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We're going to a reverse alphabetical next year. <laughs> That'll be we difficult. Can do that. We can do whatever you want. No, boss, you keep running the show. Oh, you, you just volunteered. That's what I get <laughs> out of that. It's all yours, buddy. Good night. Good night, Hi, everybody. Good night, See you in a couple of weeks. Have a great vacation. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.